Hello, off Emily. Spencer Mac here. Stoked to talk on this subject. It's definitely been one that I've been putting off for a long time. I've mentioned here and there, but uh, I've inhibited myself just due to the fear of misunderstanding. It's a very taboo subject and it can polarize people. But ultimately, I see that a more mature understanding is becoming integrated into society. So it's just a great time to talk more about this. And my entire intention behind sharing this is to enhance the safety so that people can be safe because these things are powerful. Like there's a reason that people are so afraid of them that we made them illegal for so long. They were misused, misunderstood, and then buried. Of course, the substances I'm talking about are psychedelics. There's a wide range of psychedelics. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of the different kinds and how they interact differently on your chemical makeup in your brain, but I do want to talk about the fundamental approach to the conscious and safe use of them. So to start off with a disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I am in no way trying to recommend or influence people to do these things. I only hope that I can share information that should an individual find themselves using these substances, they can have the safest and most beneficial experience possible. Now, luckily there are organizations that are operating in a legal nature that have been able to test these substances on thousands and thousands of people. And if you've never heard the book, How to Change Your Mind, it's all about the history of psychedelics. It is mind blowing and enlightening. Um, it basically gives you an insight into our history as a culture and as a people, as humanity, in our uses of psychedelics. Um, basically, one of the main reasons they were so, they were just thrown under the rug, locked into the pantry, never to be seen again and made illegal. They, they ran this whole propaganda act to make people afraid of them is because they were coming out at a time when we were trying to go to war. <clears throat> During Vietnam was when that 60s revolution was going on and everybody was dropping acid and eating mushrooms. And something happens when you take higher doses of these substances that they call it the ego disillusion. When your identity as a singular sovereign self dissolves and you have a realization of the unity of all things. Sure, we all know the saying or the idea of like, we're all one, it's all one. But that's just a concept, an abstract concept that can actually be experienced and known with the assistance of substances like these. Now that's not to say just taking a substance like this is going to put you in that state. You have to use it intelligently. The way that I see these things is they're like fire. Now you could use fire to keep you warm and alive through the winter, to illuminate the darkness and be able to see at night or in places that are usually hidden, or you can use them ignorantly and burn your whole house down with you inside of it. Both of those options are possible. So as I said, we are very lucky that as a species, we've had a lot of experience through cultures all across the globe. There's only one known culture that I'm aware of that didn't have some kind of a use of psychedelic, and that was the Inuit. And that was largely because they didn't even have plants growing where they were. So this is something that we've been doing from the dawn of humanity. And this day and age, we're lucky enough to have these organizations such as MAPS, the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies. And they have made a lot of leeway um, up the ladder of legislature in order to make these things legal for therapy. And they've come out with profound findings on, um, right now one of the more profound ones is how they can reverse post-traumatic stress disorder. The number of suicides that happen daily from our vets who have been to war, who kill themselves because of their post-traumatic trauma is ludicrous. And these substances used in a therapeutic environment are some of the most profound uh, is the most profound remedy that we know of right now. Manic depression, addictions, um, people who are on their deathbed or dying of cancer, 
They can also utilize these to drastically drop their level of fear of death. And in my perspective, all fear is ultimately an embodiment of some fear of death, whether it's an ego death, a death of your um, reputation, a death of a relationship, a death of your bank account, you're afraid of losing. And that is a statement of attachment and identification. So something profound about these substances is that they help to sharpen our mind and let us see a deeper truth, help us to see deeper within ourselves, deeper within to the inner workings of nature. And that is always prof has always profoundly um, interested me. Ever since I was a little kid, dreams, the unexplainable, the mystery have always just blown my mind. How come nobody can explain dreams? I just had a dream that was so real. Like I woke up sweating or crying or it like affected my physiology. It felt more real than this physical reality. So there's a lot that we really have yet to know. And for me, I see this whole realm of psychology as the last frontier. It's not space, it's not the deep ocean, it's the depths of our internal experience. And these are the tools and they're creating the methods that help us to dive deeper into these truths. That being said, as I said, they've had to go through so much red tape to set up processes and techniques, um, making sure that you have extremely clear, clean substances that you're using, making sure that you do the proper dosage. They found, you know, they've done this so many thousands of times, they found the proper dosage to where you're likely, not likely to have one of those terrifying experiences, because you can create the scariest thing you can imagine. You can create anything you can imagine. So they've really dialed in the dose so that you can still have what they call to be um, like a spiritual, a spiritually awakening experience, but you're less likely to go so far off the edge that you're gonna have a traumatic experience. Equally possible. Like I said, this stuff is fire. So dosage, set, and setting are these three primary principles that are just known throughout the psychedelic community as being the most vital aspects to control for when you're going to use these substances. Dosage, always start on the low end and bring it up gradually, slowly. Set is like your mindset. What's your intention? Why are you doing this? Because it's ultimately the seed of your intention, your reasoning for acting that is going to bear the fruit that you receive from your experience. So be very clear on your intention. Setting is the environment that you're in. Highly do not recommend doing these in like a party environment or anywhere where you're gonna have to travel and move around. In MAPS organization, when they do the guided therapeutic psychedelic use, they just have you laying on a couch, you have eyeglasses or you're blocking light out of your eyes and you're listening to music and you just lay there for like four hours and you have two different therapists. So these therapists you've also spent two previous days with so that you build rapport and trust. And then you have two therapists. One is being trained. The other one is um, a well-educated therapist. And they just believe that when you have the three people you can let your mind go more. It's like those two people are watching out for each other. It's not just me and another person this space is really being held and really being taken care of. So that allows you to feel a certain sense of safety that can let you drop in. You're not always having to come out to double check on your environment and make sure everything's okay. So those are some of the primary things to consider. Within that, there's a whole slew of different approaches and philosophies on how people use these. Ultimately, through my own practice and cultivation of it, I have slowly shaped my own protocol. There are certain techniques, certain practices that help me get closer to the center, closer to the source, that make it more likely for me to have an integrative experience. One of the most obvious ones and also most widely used is the breath. Just becoming aware of your breath and allowing your breath to be fluid. 
not trying to control it, because the breath will reflect your state of mind. If you want a calm and open state of mind, your breath needs to be fluid. Anytime that you're tense or you're scared, you're going to have stopped your breath. You'll be holding your breath. So the breath is a great point of focus just to bring your attention to, and you can directly affect your state of mind by changing the way that you're breathing. Now, another concept that's profoundly useful is the idea of allowing, letting it happen. Now, when you take an ample dose of psychedelics, it's like jumping in the ocean. When you get slammed by a wave in the ocean, you can't try to resist, you can't try to stop it. You're like just a little fish in there getting thrown around. And the more you relax, the more likely you are to not get injured. And the less energy you're gonna waste, the calmer your nervous system's gonna be, and just the easier it is to deal with a chaotic situation. That, that in my experience is how I've experienced psychedelics is, it's like jumping in the ocean and the dosage is like the size of the waves that are coming in. So for me, I'm not really that comfortable getting in waves over eight feet. So once I'm at eight feet, it's like right on the edge of like, this is scary. Like if this slams me, I'm gonna be okay, but it's gonna scare me. And that right there for me is like a good edge of challenge. So I try to find that edge when I explore these substances. And you know, unfortunately it's a, it's a trial and error kind of thing. And just because of my personality, I've definitely erred on the far end multiple times. An average dose for mushrooms, they say, is around two to three grams. Um, there are times when I've drank 30 or 35. Any time that I've gone above 20 grams has been a time where I have lost self-awareness, where I've woken up a couple hours later not knowing what was happening. Disassociation completely. And to me, if you get in water that high above your head, you don't learn anything from it. There's no value there anymore. So the idea of like taking more is better is simply not the case. You can really get in some very challenging and unfortunate mindsets if you abuse these substances. You have to take them extremely seriously. They're not for children, they're not recreational. They're very serious substances. And because of that, they allow for the potential of extremely enlightening and life improving perceptions, realizations. So to me, that word allowing has been extremely valuable. Now it's like you have a thousand gallons of water pouring through your, t your channel. Like if you could imagine you're just a channel and you have water running through you, when you're on these substances, that water pressure is jacked way up. You have a whole lot more energy. Any thought you direct your mind to, any decision that you make has a lot more weight behind it. Now this energy flowing through your body is going to run into all of those tense things, all of those things you hold on to, any kind of incorrect posture, you're going to feel it when it hits it. It's like hitting a stone in a river and that's going to make you uncomfortable. So bringing your attention to where these blockages are, feeling them, breathing, trying to keep yourself in good posture. You have the potential to realize the story behind the blockage. You can see what that is. It's a symbolic embodiment of some kind of problem, most likely. Some kind of perception you have, the, the stressful relationship between you and your dad, um, that trauma that you had when you were three, year old, three years old in your car accident. There's a holding pattern that's causing a tension that's stopping the flow of energy. The more of these patterns we can release, the more open we are, the more energy we can direct and cultivate, and generally just the more enjoyable life is. So psychedelics offer us an opportunity to become aware of all of the blockages in our bodies and give us a sharp enough mind, a strong enough concentration that we can work to dissolve them. Now something extremely important, all of this work, all of this crazy experience, even if it's insane, traumatic, challenging, is worth nothing if you don't put in the time afterwards to integrate the experience. That is equally valuable. If you don't have both ends, you don't get anything out of it. 
you have to really take time reflecting, writing, rereading about your experience. What did it tell you? What did you learn from it? How are you going to integrate that into your life in order to fully receive the potential of the experience? So those are some of the main ideas I just wanted to share. You got to understand dosage, set, setting, getting your intention right, learning not to resist it because this is more powerful, infinitely more powerful than you are. So it's an ability to listen, to allow, to be humble. I like to also go in with questions written down when there are certain things that I want to work on consciously, uh, certain things that I want more insight on. And also in many different traditions, they'll have you stay in a seated posture. You have to make sure that you're maintaining good posture because there's an amazing world of symbolism that you start to unravel when you're in this. The stance that you take with your body is a reflection of your internal stance or perception that you take on life. So think about it, when you're scared or you're tired, you, you start curving in and moping. This causes an infinite number of diseases. It makes you weaker, slows your circulation. You'll probably end up with some kind of cancer. You'll end up being more depressed because there's just less blood flow. They've even shown if you stand like this in what they call the Superman posture, it elevates your testosterone just because you're standing in a certain posture. So your body and your mind are one and the same. They're reflecting each other. So we want to learn to be able to stay in good posture because that is embodying our ability to stay in a healthy mindset, to stay aligned with our nature, the posture and position that our body likes to be in. So maintaining a proper posture through the experience, whether that's lying down or sitting up, very important. And like I said, the breath is also a form of posture. So to have the breath fluid and becoming aware and releasing any tension, these are all things that can really help deepen the experience. Now in maps, as I said, they have the eye shades so that you're cutting out all light. So many people out there like to take these substances and go to clubs or go do stuff or go to the beach, but you get the most value out of it whenever you go inside internally. The more that we can just drop in and let go any energy that's going out of us and direct it all back into our internal experience, the more we're going to get out of it. Because ultimately, this is the thing that's navigating and orchestrating the experience. So when we can get quiet and still enough, we can sink in deeper, finding really where is the center, where is the origin of my consciousness, of this individual that's experiencing the feelings of my body and my emotions. Where is that point of origin? Can I get in touch with that? How close can I get to it? And the more time we spend interacting with that, we spend at that place, the more truthfully we can live. We can live from that center point within us. We become familiar with it. And we learn to integrate this proper posture, this centered state into our daily lives. And on this path of unfolding and resolving all of these crazy tensions and fears and uh, discomfort that comes up because this shit is uncomfortable if you really go into it, it's not like a ton of party and fun it can be but so often there's so many challenges because there's so much we have to work on because we're just behind psychologically we don't have these kind of psychological medicines in our culture you know they're basically in every other culture throughout humanity but only in these modern day cultures have we made them illegal. So it's almost like a nutrient for the mind that we're deficient in, is how I see it. I'm not saying it's necessary. It's not for everybody. Meditation, yoga can get you to the same place. For some reason, it's been a part of my life, so I know it's part of my path. It's something I'm interested in cultivating and developing with. But something I definitely noticed is when I was younger, I had a lot more challenging experiences, particularly in my gut, in my body, in my, the pain I would feel, the discomfort I would feel. And I believe that you know, your body state reflects the state of your mind. So if you have all these discomforts and pains and anxieties that come up, vice versa, your body is in a challenged state. 
When you really get your body into a state of health, there's a lot less friction for all this energy that's running through it, and you end up with a far more enjoyable experience. And that just goes straight for life, too. The more that we can clean house, get out any unnecessary tension, any kind of toxins, and get in better postures, so we're not kinking ourselves with our spine, the better we're gonna feel, the more power we're gonna have, the more power we're gonna be able to contain and direct and circulate, and just the more we'll enjoy life. So I feel that these substances to me have been teachers for how to orchestrate and conduct my own energy, have helped act as kind of a microscope for me to get a more concentrated picture or focus on myself and how I interact with this external world, with this environment, the relationship of me and it. Who am I exactly? What are all these experiences? It's, it's like a microscope for me that helps me look deeper into certain elements of life. And when used intentionally, consciously, and then you take the information you learn and integrate it into your life, it can be very beneficial. That's my perspective all in all. There's a lot of things you really want to be careful and conscious about though, like who you're with, the environment that you're in. If you have any kind of pre-standing uh, psychological disorders, do not attempt without a therapist. Never attempt it without a therapist is what I'm going to say just because got to be safe. Um, but really, if you do have psychological disorders, there's a very real reality. It could help you, but it could also damage you. So you have to weigh your odds and ultimately you have to take responsibility for yourself. You have to put yourself in an environment where you're only going to try very small amounts, gradually bringing it until you can feel it. Um, and when we navigate this way, it's much safer. We're not going to end up in one of those completely insane, uh, chaotic experiences, which is very, very possible. Awesome guys, so this is kind of my first dive into sharing on this. I would like to see how much interest there is in this realm. I may talk about it more, I may not, just based on the feedback. Um, forcing myself to make a video every day, so this is just what's been up on topic. I just wrote a post on Facebook and had a good conversation, so while it was fresh, I just wanted to jump on here and share. So if this was helpful in any way, if you thought it was uh, not helpful and dangerous in some ways, Share all perspectives, please. Let's get the conversation going. That's what I'm interested in myself is truth. So if you hear me expressing a belief or some kind of idea in a matter of fact, certain kind of way, and you think it's wrong, help me out. I can't see my own face, you know what I'm saying? If I got something on my face, please tell me. That's what friends do. Even if it's gonna be painful, even if you're gonna hurt me, I want you to be honest and real with me. And I'll always do the same for you, whether you like it or not. <laughs> but really those are the best friends right so let's cultivate that together guys let's share our truths and we'll refine them as we go getting closer and closer to the source and a more and more enjoyable and divine life awesome guys until next time peace